today a day of mourning and activism against gender-based violence. There's a war happening against women in this country and none of us are safe. We're tired of this! We are tired! 70,000 women in one week joins a, a movement to say enough. Hi guys, how are you doing? Long time no here. <laughs> I'm currently in Hatfield waiting for Maxine and we are girls on a mission, I guess. So basically, um, it is literally exactly a week before the news about Uyinene broke out and I guess the country just went into, uh, don't even know, the worst week of our lives. And for the whole of last week, I really felt compelled to do something, to make a video, to say something, to be part of the conversation. So I'm just like really looking around because I obviously have camera equipment in the car and I'm alone as a woman in the world. So I'm just a little heightened and a bit aware. Um, there we go. So yeah, um, the whole of last week I really wanted to shoot a video and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was like kind of going back and forth with a lot of different ideas but nothing really worked really stuck I'm a big believer in using your platform no matter how big or how small your audience is your voice matters it is there um, even the people watching this video now may not have a huge audience but like it's going to be reaching someone and I think that's important to not let it die out or to not let this just be a hot topic for one week but to continue the conversation and I'm not really sure how this video is going to turn out but I did feel like before I continue with putting content on my channel I needed to say something it's an issue that is one very personal to me because I think as a woman it's impossible for it not to be personal to you not only in South Africa but in the world gender-based violence um, rape assault just feeling safe in the world you know existing in the world and also yeah, I just really want to use the B word. I want to use the platform, the voice to say something before we continue on also with the content. So yeah, that was a long intro. Let's get into it. Where's Maxine? They write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. I think it's because she's so similar to a lot of us, you know? She's very similar, especially if you watch like her live videos with her friends we all do that she's my age first of all i'm also 19 and i'm just like trying to put myself in that situation where you have like so many dreams and hopes for your life but then now it's just like they were just gone in a blink of an eye and she's in first year i was also new in hatfield going around i wasn't afraid of anything i was going everywhere and anywhere and then now i'm realizing that that could have been any one of us yeah so i think that's why it resonates with us but it was also very painful you know so it wasn't supposed to happen you know, she wasn't supposed to die like that ever, but it happened. You always think that these things happen in the middle of the night at 4 a.m., 3 a.m., yeah. at night, like when it's dark, like, you know, in corners, but then it could happen anywhere, literally anywhere. And, and I think when we all imagine it, we all imagine what would I have done in that situation. Literally, all of us would have died in that situation. Sucker, woman killer. How many souls have you sold before you were born? How many black women have you read before you were born? Black women are always far more conscious about these things than black men are because their lives are far more confined. These are some of the things that really frustrate a black woman. But when you know that you are fighting for the truth and you know that history is on your side and the truth is bound to win, I think you get some extra strength. This country has got a very long journey to take. There is a feeling of urgency that this change must come. As a mother and as a black woman, 
I wouldn't have known what my reaction would be if I found myself in a violent situation, whether I would actually take a gun and shoot in defense. This is how we live in black communities in the whole of South Africa. We live not from day to day, but from minute to minute. I don't think that there's any way to medicate a woman's actions anymore. If anything, it's about protecting one's sanity. To be honest, I, do, I don't want to, to play dumb. I don't want to feel as if like, okay, I'm a woman, I'm going to change the world. It's not, it's not happening. We've all been hearing about violence against women and children since you were young. You know it in primary school, you've been hearing it. So it's always been initiative for it. And now, I'm 21 right now, and I'm still hearing about it, and nothing's changed. So I'm kind of feeling like, so what have you been doing all these years? Like, as women, I don't, I don't know actually. I don't know what we're gonna do as women. Oh, Mama Zams, the other time when she was talking, she said, Oguti, uh, instead of uh, saying that we need self defense classes, how about we get men self control classes? Since 1960, women have been trying to fight for their rights, you know, fight for their freedom, fight, fight for this. And I'm not saying I'm accepting the reality, but if there's a need for me to conform to how the society is for my safety, staying at home at night, not talking to strangers, dressing a little bit appropriately. Find your safe space. It can be a person, it can be a place, it can be a thing that you do every day just to make you feel a bit safer. Not in terms of like, oh, I'm not gonna be victimized, but I am feeling healthy. Society is so focused on fixing us and not the guys. And the bigger problem is, is not in us. It lies within the, the perpetrators, the people that are committing all these crimes. We can watch out for each other, we can walk each other to places, but the truth is, it's not gonna be the last time someone dies like that. I don't know, dude. Like what you said was true at the it's same time, as, as sad as it is, yeah. as women we do have to end up taking precautions because it's not going to change overnight. Yeah. So I don't necessarily want to live in fear, I don't want to have to cover up, but it's something I've been doing since I was how old, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. Something needs to change eventually It needs though. to change because at the end of the day, whether you're dressed or whether you're not dressed, they're still gonna exactly do. you please don't walk into a I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> okay. oh my daughter i'm my daughter my face yo hey i'm my daughter man i say um go one thousand percent men always protect men like that's that's just a fact men should just start protecting themselves like because you can't tell me that you don't know a rapist and we know so many women that have been raped. I was speaking to my little brother, Asanda. I told him, you know what, as a privileged black boy, I think it's important for you to not exclude yourself. I saw that post and that's why I spoke to him. It's like, it was like, um, privileged black men think that they are they're exempt because they know they're not the problem they know how to do better and so they just like nah okay it's not me I'm gonna be quiet you need to stop protecting your friends you need to stop protecting your brothers and just say ah they'll probably just deal with them themselves and stuff like that talk to them you can do so much it really does count for him to know that he has friends from town from our hometown friends that he's been with from first year who are feeling exposed and unsafe who are feeling like who are feeling like they are in their numbers up and they must see if they are that one and that one in three you know and it counts for him to be a black young boy black young man on the left or the right of a woman who is on the streets marching you know what's interesting is that a lot of men know what's the right thing to do they can differentiate from right and wrong and yet it doesn't matter a lot of the cases yeah they just do whatever they want to I think it's also important to hear the male perspective because it isn't just a female problem it isn't a problem for women it's a societal problem yeah. and yeah as men and women we need to engage men do not need to be driving the conversation or taking oh Lead. Jesus well that's ironic yeah you know, <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> To 
to be honest with your country. Hi. <laughs> Our government can make moves, man. Like the life sentence issue is valid. The sensationalism online. I think we'll find we'll be quietening down and I think the tragedy is that we're so used to flaring things up with sensationalism in the news and then not having the pull through and the push through. We as everyone need to start like unlearning some of the stuff that was taught to us. You were told from a young age that like whatever happened to her it's because she was wearing something short and like you feel like it's a justification for what happened to you as well. Um, another thing would be to create a jail for sexual predators only. Literally there's so many sexual predators in South Africa we could make up in a nice population further away from everybody and where the parole rules are strict because rapists are released easily. A rapist gets 15 years and they do five. If they're lucky, they can do two and they're released. Like, I've st I really enjoyed the protests of the p previous week, but I'm hoping that there are more. <laughs> if there is change, it's going to be a slow change. It's going to be in a specific area. It's going to take time to spread. You know, that's why the government needs to do something in the early stages of development for these kids then change is guaranteed but like in the next generation like probably you know in the next 10 years 15 years things will 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 start to change but for now we still have the same guys catch you guys up we've just come back from walking around Hatfield and just speaking to different women um, it was such a eye-opening experience for both of us Very I think um, I was just chatting to Max about how how different it is when you're on social media and you're busy talking and you're reading all these ideas. It's almost very ideological, but and intellectual and very and intellectual, just, and you, you can be removed from that. This is actually a real issue. This yeah. is real people, and there was actually a story towards the end, like the very last woman we approached. Um, and we nearly we didn't. Yeah, we, we nearly, nearly just didn't by approach them. her. And we chose, well, they didn't feel comfortable in speaking on camera, but they spoke to us off camera. But yeah, um, that, yeah, it was a hard, that was a hard, a hard one. story to just even talk about. We were done, we were walking back to the car and then a group of people walked by us. And then I looked back and this lady had her baby wrapped around her. And I was like, it would be interesting to have a mother on the mm. on the series as well mm. and um, so then we were like we should maybe we should go back and they were kind of far away from us already and then yeah. I, we had to switch lenses so I just told Bukhang to run yeah. and catch up to them and then she just she went for it I ran and I ran <laughs> and I was like but like again we just have to be pr um, very aware of how we approach yeah, women yeah we don't want to come off I mean, they're already so wary and hesitant. Yeah. Uh, we had so many girls who them. were just like, hi, and then they were like, hi. Yeah, they would actually like, like, take like, a what's, step back. What's and, going on? Yeah. And it's so sad that that's the world that we're living in. Like, mm. you literally have to question everything, everyone, even another woman, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. So we spoke to, um, it was uh, two elderly women and the one, the mama with the baby on her back and it was another younger girl and I think they were a family and um, the one girl wanted to share her story but she didn't feel like her family would appreciate um, that being out yes. there. I won't go into too much detail just out of like um, respect. respect for them. Although she did say that she wants yeah, her story wants to be heard but she just couldn't hear yeah, herself but yeah true. i don't know where we so, draw the line exactly but it was basically she had her sister had gone missing at 16 years old and then here around hatfield she actually saw her five years later when the sister was 21 and she and actually sister, she recognized her sister by seeing her legs by her legs she was like she that was girl like has the same the legs as my sister yeah. and then she literally went up to her and so it was actually her sister and they started crying and her sister had been into prostitution now for those five years and she said that she went to a party, the sister went to a party one and then she woke up the next morning and she was somewhere else in a, in different, a different area city. already. Yeah. And then she woke up the next morning again, imagine she was in PE and then five years later she's back in Pretoria. Mm. So yeah, Whew. 
it was she was um, it was an emotional yeah it was, it was very emo emotional. Was emotional so that was hard and yeah it was sad that she felt like she couldn't speak about it as much as she really did want to but i think it just hit home to us how real all of this we're talking yeah. about it's not just like you know women aren't safe and it's not just words it's people's yeah. real life experiences and she still she hasn't seen her since eh? yeah she hasn't seen her since so this is still missing and she doesn't know so there's no closure for her <sighs> so yeah it's hard it, it's very hard but yeah i hope that this video i don't know i think helped somehow i think just to keep the conversation going because yeah. there's women like that that live their everyday lives with that story it, yeah, on their shoulders yeah just within them yeah, yeah and it's i feel like everyone should just be a little more sensitive yeah. towards people in general yeah and men need to try harder they need to do better they need to do better but yeah and change i think like the one girl says gonna come slowly but we just don't give up also don't live in fear i should have to get to oh my class has started i have to get to school really? to teach yeah it's two o'clock my class starts okay. at two o'clock but i have to go <laughs> yes i'm gonna go thank you so much for watching guys please thank share you. keep the conversation going and leave a comment below wow, we have so much more to talk about but we have no a time. lot more to a talk about happened. if you want to see afternoon. more videos um on like just creating awareness this topic let yeah. us know and we'll do what we can because it's the least we can do if you still want a job you better get out of okay. this car <laughs>